but I want to bring in Paul and Annalise now in Washington, D.C. And uh, what are you picking up from these numbers? Everyone's looking at the, the early signs. Paul, Annalise, your thoughts? Let's go to Paul first, because you are the numbers guy. <laughs> OK, hit us with it. What have you got? Tom, number one, and I'll do my best to, uh, <laughs> to get a good silver medal uh, today. Look, the start is good for Trump uh, at the moment. Uh, basically, obviously, we know ultimately if this thing comes down to Pennsylvania, for us to get to that as the finish line, we need to uh, uh, start to put away what is happening in Georgia, North Carolina, uh, obviously a little bit later, Arizona, Nevada. So, uh, in Georgia, this was a place that Biden won significantly uh, last time. This is a place now that is very much trending Trump's way. And perhaps the biggest internal trend that we are seeing is that in the exit polling, now this does change, the margins move around a little bit, but there has been a 20 point change yeah. from Democrats to Republicans uh, in terms of the independent vote. Yeah. So obviously it's all good for Team Red, Team Blue. It's all very good for us to talk about the gender gap. The reality of who swings this is the independents. Yeah. If the independents are moving like that across the country, then Trump wins, we'll know tonight. However, uh, if you can start to lock away Georgia as something that Trump would be most likely to win, we then move on to North Carolina, where the numbers are incredibly early, yeah. and it's a bit grey in the exit polls right now. When we're talking about the independent vote too, they are the ones that swing because when we're talking about the other sides, they just vote or don't vote. Yes. And so we've already got an indication through record high uh, early voting last year. It hasn't come in as high this year. Correct. That, uh, this time around. That's the big difference. Yeah, 100 percent. I mean, because obviously the pandemic meant literally people were being sent ballots, mm -hmm. the ease of which where you can vote from home, basically. Also, I remember last time people were so bored during the pandemic. There was nothing on. It became like an activity to go vote. <laughs> yeah. I remember people saying that when I would say, are you going to vote on Election Day? And they'd be like, yes, because we're not doing anything yeah, else. It's one of the reasons yeah. I can leave the house. <laughs> and, uh, also, no, seriously, sorry. now people are doing three jobs yeah. to make the ends meet. And so we've met so many people people that are like the jobs numbers we find it so frustrating when we're told the economy is great my economy is not great I have to work three times as hard to make the same ends meet well and again literally in the uh, the jobs numbers that came out last month yes there was a strike at the ports for a couple of days yes yeah. there were some hurricanes this economy only added 12,000 jobs Australia added more jobs yeah. last month than the United States. In the exit polling as well about issues, now we know the higher abortion goes, the better it is for Kamala Harris. Yeah. The higher the economy goes, it's better for Trump. Well, unsurprisingly, like everything else, of the four major exit polls, it's 50-50 right yeah. now about what the major issue is. Two of them are, are saying the economy, two of them are saying uh, democracy. But if the economy is the picture by which people look at this, again, big break for Donald Trump and something that got a few people gasping over in lefty land uh, in and around this city and other places was that 75% of people think the joint's headed in the wrong direction. Yeah. And as uh, some commentators have said, it would be very strange to see the sitting as a member of a sitting administration re-elected yeah. when three quarters of the country think you're in the wrong place. But that's their strategy to say we're not the incumbent, we're a fresh start, we're a new generation, we're a new face. And so we don't know what voters really think of that. And we know there's a certain population that just hates Donald Trump. There's nothing you could do to talk them out of that. And we know there's a certain population that just adores him. And so again, it comes back to what I'm you're saying. I'm aware of both. Yeah. Friends and family, <laughs> them yet. foes and enemies all around. So that's why the independent voters matter for these kind of elections. Yeah, and, and it's this thing where, and, and hence why, you know, oh, the democracy is at threat, trying yeah. to make that the issue. But the truth is that, that, and look, early days, right? But we're just talking about this hour and essentially sort of think of it like, you know, a collection of gates closing to get us to, yeah. you know, seven swing states, let's get it down to five, four, three, and then inevitably one most likely to be Pennsylvania. But Trump will think that they um, have got a shot of maybe winning two of those blue wall states. If yeah. they win that and Georgia's off the table, North Carolina's off the table, then it doesn't matter what happens in Arizona and Nevada, yeah. Trump wins. Uh, but early days, everyone. Absolutely. So we'll throw it back to you, Kieran, because you could let us talk all night. <laughs> we <laughs> will. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, well, we look forward to chatting to you right throughout the night.